I got two thumbs up. All right. Good morning, or sorry, good afternoon. This is the time and the place for a workshop before the board for possible action regarding proposed amendments to the Nevada Gaming Commission Regulation 5.225 regarding without limitation wagering accounts used for other than sports, non parimutuel race, and other event uh, other event wagering and requirements regarding patron identity verification. Madam Secretary, has this notice been properly, uh, this workshop been properly noticed? Yes, it has. And in accordance with the meeting law? Yes, it has. Thank you very much. That'll move us to our public comment section. This item is placed on the agenda to give the public an opportunity to comment on gaming related matters. Anybody wishing to speak, um, please come to the podium down in Carson City. Sorry, up in Carson City. Nobody in Carson City, anybody here in Las Vegas? Nope, we'll close that section. And with that, um, we'll move on. I wanna thank everybody for being here today again. Uh, as you probably know, we had a very robust conversation last time with the record a few weeks ago. Um, so what I'd like to do now is since that time, we've posted a draft um, regulation which essentially is a reskinning of what the petition was from Sightline originally. But at this time, what I'd like to do is turn things over to Senior Dex Som so he could go over the changes on the record. Sure, thank you, Member Katsaros. Um, at your direction and with your help and, and Chief Barbie's help, uh, I did create a draft of proposed changes to Rig 5.225. Um, that's dated November 24th of this year. I, I can say that this draft has been posted to the board's website, and I believe at the same time as the as the workshop notice. I think we'll probably hear from Sightline uh, here in a moment, but uh, the language in this draft is in line with the with the goal of Sightline's regulation petition um, to allow for remote identity verification for wagering accounts used for on-premises gaming, with the exception of um, wagering accounts used for sports, on paramutual race, and other event wagering. Um, but this draft makes some modifications to what Sightline uh, proposed uh, as, as desired by you, at least one board member here today. So first, this draft puts uh, the language changes in a more typical regulation amendment format. But then uh, more importantly, the proposed language would require that a government issued ID be provided in either the context of a patron personally appearing at the gaming establishment or where identity is confirmed remotely. In addition, with remote identity confirmation, the ID must be coupled with a method that enables the licensee to form a reasonable belief that it knows the true identity of the patron, such as dynamic knowledge-based authentication or another method acceptable to the chair. Uh, I believe Chief Barbie is here today um, and he might uh, wanna add to this, we'll see, but um, for the record, Dynamic knowledge-based authentication is something that uses knowledge-based questions to verify a person's identity. Uh, questions are compiled from public and private databases. An example would be where a patron is uh, presented with a list of addresses uh, and the patron must identify which one of those addresses is their prior address. Uh, the other change that I'll mention in this draft, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and is, it was in Sightline's proposed as well, proposal as well, is that uh, some outdated language is removed in, in uh, subsection 18, and that's it. Okay, pretty straightforward. Again, I'll reiterate that as well. It's, it's, it's in line with what the petition was by Sightline. Um, we did have to tweak it um, as we often like to do to, to make sure it's uh, sort of brought in line with our traditional way of drafting, crafting regulations. Um, but since Mr. Chief Barbie's name was mentioned here, or uh, we might as well bring him up, see if he has anything to add there in this regard. I know he's been directly involved in uh, tweaking some of the language that we have before us as well. Uh, good afternoon, board members. Um, Jim Barbie with the technology division. I really don't have anything to add other than to clarify as Mr. Somps did what knowledge-based authentication means. I think there was some testimony previously that may have used uh, something, for example, like which city were you born or what's your favorite ice cream or something along those lines. And to differentiate, those are security questions. Knowledge-based authentication would be, a dynamic knowledge-based authentication would be along the lines of what Mr. Somps had stated. 
uh, of these locations do you where did you live or which of these institutions do you have uh, an obligation with financial something along those lines but other than that no, i don't have any comments thank you thank you and thank you for your work on this um on the record last time we were discussing in some detail with uh the the, the concept of this change that we have before us and there was quite a lot of discussion as to whether or not there could be some sort of dis disconnect or potential contravening of federal law um, I, if you would mind, um, Senior Dag Soms, could you share your thoughts on this and weigh in on it? Sure. I, I, I have uh, spent some time reviewing the, the federal requirements in this space, uh, specifically a requirement that when a, a, an account is opened with a casino, the customer's identity must be verified through an examination a document such as a, as a driver's license. I also reviewed the acceptive relief that was issued by FinCEN back in October of this year where for accounts open for online gaming, casinos can verify identities using non-documentary non means. So with, with my review of those, those items, um, I don't see that the proposed language in the, in the draft that, that is before you, at least that, that uh, I prepared with, with uh, all right, your direction, I don't see that there's any conflict uh, with federal law. Okay, and, and I agree. I think I was clear on the record, my thoughts on this. Um, I'll, I'll even point to the acceptive relief that we're talking about. That one was more in uh, a, a acceptive relief for online gaming, but embedded in that there was a lot of narrative though, or some narrative that actually talked about the, the terrestrial world, the brick and mortar world as well. And in there, interestingly buried in there when I reread it, they even discuss how in the brick and mortar world, and I'm summarizing, they incentivize in person, but they don't require, they use the word incentivize, but I wanted to go even further that just to allay any concerns, particularly because I know at some point, hopefully this is gonna be before the commission, and so there's no um, doubt in anybody's mind. I, I spoke with some folks over at the Title 31 section as well, and they confirmed as much as the same, which is no, in-person is not required as part of this verification process. So I just wanted to get that on the record. Um, Can I ask a question? So Senior Doug Soms, uh, Brent Gibson for the record. I just wanted to make sure that we're clear. So we're talking about a remote registration potentially uh, uh, for an account that would be used uh, to wager on premises, right? So within the brick and mortar space. That's correct. So documentary methods are required for that. The inclusion of a non-documentary method in addition to the documentary requirements, does that invalidate this regulation in your mind? No, no, it doesn't. Um, the other thing I'll, I'll say is that uh, in regards to um, the examination of a document, I don't see that the, the federal requirements say one way or another, whether that has to be in person or not. So I don't view the federal requirements as mandating that it be in person. Examination can occur remotely. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I didn't know if we wanted to discuss the draft now or what I'd like to do is hear from representatives, representatives from Sightline. I think we have Mr. Papano online, if I'm not mistaken, but I see we have Mr. Sitar here as well as Ms. Carlton as well. But I didn't know if we wanted to discuss first, we wanna hear from them first. If you don't have a preference, we'll hear from you guys first. You've had a chance to, to look at the latest draft there. Any concerns, thoughts, or otherwise? I'm, I'm happy to start. Uh, uh, Member Katsouros. Uh, oh, sorry, to... for the record, your name? Oh, I'm, yeah. Uh, so my name is Omar Sattar. I'm one of the founders and co-CEO of Sightline. Uh, uh, thank you to the board for having us here, uh, uh, Senior Dag Soms and Chief Barbie, uh, and as well as Secretary Belt. And, uh, we have had the opportunity to review. Uh, uh, we are completely in alignment uh, with the draft that has been posted. And, uh, and uh, I did want to mention uh, for the record as well, before we go to potentially Ms. Mary Van Brackle, uh, who is a banking attorney uh, with the firm of Oric, uh, who uh, uh, submitted a document to the Gaming Control Board from November 24th. And, uh, in regards to specifically the word around examination. Uh, she is a banking and payments expert with about 30 years worth of experience uh, working with some of the largest financial institutions in the country, uh, as well as payment processors. And as you mentioned, Member Kat Soros, uh, 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 Joe Pano, uh, our co-CEO at Sightline is on the phone as well. And one thing I did want to mention of interest that was uh, discussed and wanted to place it on the record the last time around, uh, there was a discussion around uh, federal ID requirements, especially around at airports, where we walk into an airport uh, and we are still required to show an ID. Uh, that was particularly curious to me uh, because, as you know, and I thank you for indulging me last time around, I dialed in from effectively a hotel lobby in uh, London. And 
and I had arrived in London a few days earlier at Heathrow Airport and and had uh, walked into the UK, literally walked into the UK, uh, never having shown my ID or spoken to, speak, uh, spoken to a human being. And uh, there was a turnstile light kiosk. I took my glasses off. Uh, it looked at my face and it opened the door and I walked to the UK. Uh, so the question was, are we working on something similar here in the country? And, uh, if you note me for one second, I will. Uh, I want to get this precisely right. And it turns out the Department of Homeland Security, the TSA, uh, and uh, Customs and Border Patrol is working on exactly that kind of methodology uh, for all airports in the U.S. And and what they define as. Uh, there is a lot of documentation around this as the notional phase approach to TSA checkpoint ID verification. And, uh, and in this system, uh, they go through four steps. The first one is for the TSA to partner with customers and border patrol and biometrics for international travelers. The second step is operationalize biometrics for TSA pre-approved travelers. The third step is expand biometrics to additional domestic travelers. And the fourth step is develop supportive infrastructure for biometric solutions. And, they go through a phased approach of a four-step process for this that goes from traditional, what they call highest friction, which is what we experience as airport travelers today, all the way through what they call biometrics plus, which is moderate friction, supervised biometrics, which is lesser friction, and then entirely self-serve biometrics. And uh, in phase four of self-serve biometrics, uh, we would effectively be implementing what is today implemented at Heathrow Airport already, uh, where the ID has been remotely verified prior to the person arriving, uh, and some form of recognition might be used, such as facial recognition, or it might not be used. And, uh, so, so it turns out uh, all our travel is about to become a lot easier and, uh, at, at McCarran and, well, Harry Reid Airport uh, and, 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 and around the country as well. And, uh, with that, I will open it up to uh, Ms. Carlton, our Chief Legal Officer. It always pains me when we're following the Brits. They can't cook, but I guess they got the travel, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jennifer Carlton. I'm the Chief Legal Officer for Sightline Payments, and thank you to the members uh, of the board for participating in this workshop again, as long as Secretary Bell and the staff for all of their hard work. Um, we've reviewed the language that's been proposed by the board, and we uh, wholeheartedly support it. Um, to, to Chair Gibson's point specifically about that language and to the FinCEN guidance, one of the things in our petition that we had asked for was for the utilization of non-documentary evidence. We called it something else, but essentially that's, if you're utilizing the terminology in the FinCEN guidance, that's what we requested. The language of the board is, is a little different as uh, Senior Deputy Attorney General Soms pointed out, it's a little different in that it still requires documentary evidence coupled with non-documentary evidence. And I think that's to your point, that's really where the FinCEN guidance is in some respects inapplicable because that was specifically geared toward the online gaming verification uh, utilizing non-documentary evidence um, in isolation. Here, the Nevada, we're still requiring documentary evidence. And so in that respect, um, the it's certainly obviously consistent with FinCEN guidance too, because we are still requiring that documentary evidence in the form of some form of government ID. We're adding the additional protection of non-documentary evidence as well. So um, I didn't have anything further unless you had questions about our submission. Uh, we also have Barry, uh, Barry Van Barakel, um, who provided the written uh, response to uh, the questions that were raised related to the FinCEN guidance. If you had any questions for, for her or Omar or myself. I'll turn to my colleagues if they have any questions. I don't have any questions. I'm satisfied by the information that's been submitted in writing. Thank you. That's sufficient. Thank you. Mr. Gibson, questions or comments? <clears throat> Is there, uh, can we read into the end of this? So let's see here. Um, a governmental issued picture identification credential. Is that a, does it need to be valid? And expired? Uh, 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 that's an entirely fair point. I mean, uh, we, we would expect it to be valid. We would expect it to be verified. And uh, so it is not just simply a taking a picture of your ID. And uh, it is actually, you're verifying that it is a real ID. It is in fact valid. It belongs to the person. 
uh, who says that it belongs to. And we actually like the idea of adding non-documentary because there's other third-party sources that allow us to validate an ID in conjunction with non-documentary to know with great certainty that this is a real true valid ID. And so we would expect it to be a passport, a driver's license, uh, or some other form of official government issued ID. And, but yes, valid would be a, a requirement. Under sub 7A, we've already had language in there that talked about a patron presenting a government issue picture ID. We did not have the word unexpired or, or valid. Um, I don't see any harm in adding the word valid, frankly. I think valid would be more appropriate if we were going to, because unexpired would just be one component of the overall ID, whereas valid encapsulates the entire thing. Um, but if we were going to look to insert a word, I think we'd have to do it in that section as well as the next one, as uh, section D, uh, as drafted by Senior Tech Sant. Mr. Katsaros? I believe there's another section, and I apologize, I don't have like 5225 in front of me, but that there's another point in 5225 further down that says the identification has to be verified. And wouldn't potentially the verification process identify whether it was valid or not? Can you uh, correct me or take a look at that one, Mike? I, I would agree. I think that that's just uh, incorporated with the idea of confirming someone's ID that it'd be difficult to do if it's if the patron is presenting an invalid ID or an expired ID. I just think it's implied within the, the nature of confirming someone's ID. I don't find it offensive to add the language. I, I'm more of a, a less is a more person if we don't need the words, but putting it in there doesn't change the intent or the effect. I just don't believe that that, that may be necessary. Okay. Yeah, and, and clearly it was the judgment of prior boards and commissions not to include another word, but I, I don't, I don't have an issue with including um, the insertion of that concept, valid, et cetera, and being along those lines. And remember, Katsouros, I mean, from a technology standpoint, I mean, Chief Barbie is, is entirely correct. I mean, when you verify an ID, you verify that it is in fact valid. But so either way, we, we are fine as well because they they go hand in hand. And, I think the difference is between the word confirm and valid, right? Or no? Well, well, we're, we're here. We're we're. I, this is, I guess, more of a legalese type of question, but we're, are we, or semantical, are we verifying the idea is valid, but we're verifying the person is who they say they are based upon the credentials. I don't want to belabor the point. If it's the will of my colleagues to insert um, a, a word valid or some other um, similar word, I'm fine with that. I, I can go either way on that, frankly. Um, and I didn't have any questions on the submission either. If there was anything you wanted to share in addition to that, um, we're all ears, but I think we've kind of gotten to a point where I, I'm certainly comfortable in supporting the existing language or language that would include the word valid in both of those sections that we're discussing here or not. Um, but if there's anything else you wanna include or put on the record, please, by all means. Uh, I think nothing further from us. The only thing I'd say is that uh, uh, Chief Barbie was entirely right last time around. I misspoke and I said Nevada went live for I poker in 2014. I was completely wrong. It was obviously 2011. So thank you for correcting that, Chief Barbie. But, but not, n nothing further. But, okay. No worries there. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. If there was anybody else that wanted to spoke on this item, please come to the podium. Good afternoon, uh, member Katsaros, members of the board, uh, Mark Rubenstein with the law firm of Reed Rubenstein and Bogatz on behalf of Station Casinos. Um, I really don't have a lot to add, uh, but I wanted to kind of close the loop since I was uh, essentially the disruptor at the last workshop. That's not how I um, characterize it. But, uh, <laughs> well, I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. It's, it's definitely the holiday season. And my gift to you today <laughs> is, uh, is that uh, uh, although we still uh, find it curious that, uh, uh, that this is uh, needed for terrestrial gaming in, that is limited to the actual casino <laughs> where you're creating the account, um, we, uh, we do not object to, to the, uh, the board uh, draft. We think it, it by coupling the, uh, the government issued ID with uh, the remote, with the uh, alternative method of verification, uh, we're comfortable that uh, there's no longer an issue with, with federal law. Okay, well, thank you for that. Thank you. 
I guess I'll just add on to that. Just I should probably stop while we're ahead. But um, you know, it's it's ubiquitous in our world today. You walk into Starbucks and people are already have their accounts signed up. I'm still one of the people that walk in, sit in line and order. But it's just a convenience. It's part of our everyday life now where people want to sign up in advance, just move on with their life. They don't even want to go to that queue. You know, it's just kind of what people do. This encourages the use of technology, somewhat of a, 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 a mandate, I would say mandate, something the commission has certainly wanted to encourage. And I know this board does as well provides customer choice. It meshes up already with what we have in the online gaming space. We've got 10 years of experience. We know it's safe and secure. Um, they know this in no way discourages visitation. We still have to go in there and actually into the, the casino to actually game in any event. And it in no way jeopardizes or sacrifices or shortcuts any of our regulatory oversight in this regard. We've got the experience here. So I'm, um, I'm happy to move forward with this as is. Um, but I'll turn it over to my colleagues. No, I am too. I mean, it's confirmation of identity. It's uh, it's a verification of the that we're after here. So I think this does that. And just for the record, I mean, the, the sports wagering is, um, you'd have to go through an entirely separate and distinct amendment process if you wanted to, if you wanted to include that. It, it's expressly excluded from this draft. So with that, I'm comfortable with the document. Thank you for adding that. Yeah. I forgot to mention that. That's important. Um, I think we should probably go back to the validation, um, discussing the validation issue. And I don't know, maybe some you had a recommendation on that. I don't know if we need to turn to Black's Law Dictionary for um, confirmed versus uh, validation and, you know, whether that extra, extra word is needed. Because um, there could be a distinct difference between the word confirmed and validate. Yep. Am I? Member Watkins, I, I um... I think it's fine the way it is, but it certainly doesn't harm uh, anything to add the word valid. Okay. So the and so just so we're clear, the suggestion is under sub uh, what is it seven a, in that sense there, the patron personally appears before an employee of the licensee at its licensed gaming establishment or at the licensed gaming establishment of its affiliate, where the patron presents a valid government ID, that would be the word, uh, that would be the place and the word where it would be considered to be inserted right before government. Similarly, in the next one as well, there'd be, so as it reads in the right now, it just says, through the patron providing a government issued ID, the, the suggestion would be to put valid in there. Is this, is this what we're talking about? I think that's what I'm talking about. And I would also refer to uh, 16, where it says, um, confirming the patron's identity in accordance with subsection seven of this regulation just uses the word confirming. So I don't know if we, I don't know. Uh, so right now it says confirming the patron's identity in accordance with subsection seven. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, so I don't know if the reference back to seven is enough or if we need to include also validating in that language. I'm not falling on the validating language. So the uh, 16 refers back to sub seven, basically saying you've got to do it in accordance with that. Mm -hmm. okay. So just because we had also added it to B, I don't know if we also want to include it in 16 is all I'm saying. Oh. I, I'm not arguing either way, really. I just, just for consistency purposes, is it enough to just simply reference back to subsection seven or do we need to include the validating language here? I think, because, I, I think because subsection 16 refers back to, to seven, there's no need. Okay. To add any validation type of language there. Okay. All right. I'm okay with it. Okay. So is it the will of my colleagues to insert valid or not? Good with this. I think it's a good addition. And um, and just as we semantics, since we're talking semantics, confirming would be tantamount to verifying, right? To use the title thirty thirty one language. I'd agree, Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Okay. With that, then, if you entertain a motion, I will absolutely. I will make a motion, Chair Gibson. Please. I move that the board submit to the Nevada Gaming Commission for their consideration and adoption the proposed amendments to Regulation 5.225 that are before us, draft dated November 24, 2021, taking into account the change we just mentioned on the record, inserting the word valid under Section 7A and, and 7B. 
um, along with the recommendation that any such adoption be made effective upon Nevada Gaming Commission approval. I'd second that. Member Katsaros? Aye. Member Watkins? Aye. Chair Gibson? Aye. That brings us back to public comment. Is there any is placed on the agenda to give the public an opportunity to comment on gaming related matters? It's a little different sitting here than over there. <laughs> is there anybody up in Carson City wishing to speak on this matter? Seeing none, Carson City. That'll close that. And that will bring the whole workshop to a close. Thank you very much for being here.